Hey guys, this is Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today I'm sitting in my house during quarantine. I still can't leave here in Puerto Rico and I was thinking, what is something interesting that I could do to be more productive as a photographer? And I was thinking, could there be some sort of photo series that I could start while I have all of this free time and actually be a productive photographer instead of wasting all of my time just watching Netflix? And so today I'm going to attempt to take some really interesting product shots of some of my favorite guitar pedals and hopefully create something that's totally unique in my own portfolio. Now today's video is sponsored by Skylum's Luminar photo editing software. Luminar is radically different from all other imaging software that I've ever tried. Most other software requires you to learn complicated steps and techniques to achieve your desired results. But with Luminar, all of your editing can be done with easy to use sliders, which makes processing your photos both quick and intuitive. Perhaps the coolest feature of any software that I've really seen ever is Luminar's AI sky replacement. With a simple click of a button, you can easily change a boring sky into the perfect sky for both your clients and your portfolio. This is a complete game changer for all photographers, but especially for architectural photographers, landscape photographers, or if you take pictures for Instagram. Luminar also recently introduced AI Augmented Sky, which allows you to perfectly place exciting elements into your sky without having to use complicated masks or blending modes. So no matter if you've just recently picked up a camera and editing photos kind of intimidates you, or if you're a professional photographer looking to simplify your workflow, Luminar could be the perfect software for you. If you want to try Luminar completely for free, head over to the description in the link below, or if you're the type of photographer who likes to buy their software outright and don't want to deal with any subscription fees, use the discount in the description below and you can save a little bit of money if you decide to buy the software. So my goal for today is to try to light all of these pedals all in camera without having to do a whole lot of editing. I think this blue pedal is probably the most interesting for this demonstration, so let's start here. Eventually I'm going to photograph all of these, but let's go into the studio and let's talk about lighting and how we can make this look as good as possible using just two lights. Alright, so here we are in the studio and the first thing I want to do is place the product on a very clean surface because the concept for this photo shoot is to change the surface color that the pedal is actually sitting on. And so I think the easiest way to do that is just to use something white. So I have the pedal sitting on this box. I put some nice white paper on here. I wanna make sure it's nice and clean. And then I'm just placing the pedal directly in the middle of this. If I need to expand the canvas, I can always do that in post, but I'm kinda of thinking the overall frame is just gonna be a very tight shot. I've also plugged the pedal in with a little power cable. I don't think I'm gonna plug in guitar cables, but I do wanna have some power just so I can get the LEDs to light up. The final thing that I wanna do is I wanna make sure all of the knobs are set in a visually interesting position. I'm gonna be photographing a bunch of different pedals and some of them have better knobs than others, but I think for a pedal like this, it looks really cool to have all of the knobs pointing in one single direction. Of course, this isn't how you would use the pedal, but it definitely gives a better visual impact. So for this particular photo shoot, I wanna give the pedals each a very stylized look, but I want them to also look very consistent. So the first thing I'm gonna do is shoot directly over the pedal, but I also wanna give it kind of a compressed look. I don't want the pedals to be really wonky and stretched out. So I'm gonna be shooting on a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, and I can actually get away shooting right around 200 millimeters. And if I just position myself over the pedal here, I can see that I'm still able to focus on the pedal. It's not too close, but I'm able to capture everything, including the white paper. Now let's talk about camera settings. I know because the pedals are gonna be one to two inches deep, I do want a deep depth of field. So I'm gonna be shooting at F13. For my shutter, I'm gonna be at my maximum sync speed right around one two hundredth of a second. That's gonna guarantee that everything is completely black except for the light that I'm gonna be introducing in a minute. And for the ISO, I'm gonna be shooting around 64, which is gonna guarantee me a really clean base image. So what's really gonna make this photo series cool are going to be the shadows. I want to throw really long shadows across the pedal. It's gonna give it an aesthetic that's gonna look really graphic, but it's also going to help show all of the details of the knobs and the selector switches. And a lot of these pedals, they've been designed to have a really cool graphic element. So that's kind of the approach I'm going for in this series. So the first thing I need to start with is creating the really long shadows, and long shadows are gonna be best created with hard light. Now I can position this light anywhere. I could put it really far away, I could put it really low to the ground, I could put it really close, I could put it really high up into the sky. I'm gonna have to play around with each pedal because in some cases, hard shadows being cast down to the bottom right might cover some of the text in one pedal, 
where another pedal, it might look really cool. So it's not the sort of situation where this light's gonna be placed in one place and then I could just throw in every pedal. I'm gonna have to cater the lighting to every single pedal that I shoot. So I'm gonna turn on the modeling lamp here and show you how big of a difference the light placement is going to make on this pedal. Keep in mind, I'm not using any modifiers. I'm not using any kind of grids or any kind of snoots. I'm just gonna be using this bare bulb. And then in a minute, I'm going to add a second light that's gonna be a really soft light to help fill in the shadows to give a little bit more definition. And I think together, these two lights are gonna make this look really cool. First, let me show you how the placement of our key light completely changes the mood of our image. So as you can see here, I have the light positioned right above the pedal. You can see the shadow being cast downwards. If I move it, you can see how I can start to move the shadows in either direction. I think for a lot of these, I'm going to try to get the left shadow and the bottom shadow perfectly even so that it's symmetrical. I don't want it to be something like this where it's really narrow on one side but really deep on the bottom. I want it to be really even. You can also see if I go really far here, part of that knob is being reflected into the shadow, which I kind of like. If I were to go up here, maybe like this, maybe I could get rid of that knob. It's going to be different for each pedal. If I go too far down, the Shadow is going to be really, really extreme, and you're also going to lose a lot of the detail in the pedal itself. You can see how much shadow I'm casting on the pedal from this position. I don't think that's going to look good. And so as I move the light around, I want to make sure that none of the text or the logos are covered by the shadow. I also don't want any specular highlights. You can see if I start to bring the light too far over, I can illuminate part of the pedal kind of where it says drive, and you're gonna get all those little sparkles. But on the other side of the pedal, the left side, it's not gonna show that at all. I want this to be kind of consistent while showing off the detail of the pedal, but I don't want any glare that's gonna make it look too ugly. You can also see that kind of in the knobs here. I'm able to get some of the knobs to have a gloss while the other ones don't. I think that looks really distracting. So I wanna make sure I show off all the knobs and all the details, but I don't want any distracting specular highlights to show up in one part of the pedal without it being consistent over the entire pedal. Now in this demonstration, you can also see the LED lights are lit. I will have to admit shooting with a long shutter and getting everything perfectly balanced is pretty difficult. So in many cases, I'm probably going to add the LED lights in post. It's a lot easier and it gives me a lot more control. So I think this light's in a great position. It's casting really long shadows, which I like, but it's making those shadows incredibly dark. So what I'm gonna do with my second light is I'm gonna use this as fill, and I'm gonna bounce it into the ceiling, and hopefully by using this modeling lamp, I can show you what kind of an effect this is gonna have. But basically, depending on where I place my fill light, I can control the amount of fill in the dark shadows, but I can also control the secondary shadow. You can imagine if I bring the light way over here to my right, it's gonna cast a soft shadow on the left side of the pedal. But if I bring the light over here close to my key light, it's going to create a soft fill in those dark shadows, but the secondary shadow is gonna fall in the same direction and it's gonna be a lot less noticeable. So for me, I like to have my soft, large fill light on the same direction as the key light. It doesn't have to be perfect, but generally in the same area. Now, the reason this works in this particular room is I have a huge white ceiling. If you have a white ceiling, this is great. If not, you may want to use a big softbox. A softbox would probably give you even more control because you could put your fill exactly as close or far away as you want. But for me, this is gonna work perfect. So let me get a light stand, set this light up, and we'll start taking our final images. So I've been taking a couple images and you can see from these examples just how big of a difference the lighting makes with the fill light and then with the hard light alone. Now, I've shot a couple of these pedals already and one thing I've learned doing this is that the soft light is really gonna play a huge role in some of the reflections on the chrome. So what I find myself doing is moving this light around quite a bit. And another thing that I found useful is I can lower the light closer to the ground and that's gonna make the spread of the light on my ceiling much larger, but if I put the light really close to the ceiling, I can make a soft light that's very directional and very small. So depending on how the product actually looks, I'm adjusting my fill light quite a bit. My key light is almost set it and forget it, but my fill light, it does take a little bit of tinkering with. So I'm taking a bunch of different shots. You can see all these on the screen. I think this is my favorite, and it just goes to show, you definitely can shoot product shots with a hard light source but in many cases, you might also want a second fill light just to bring those shadows up. 
The viewer is still gonna register it as hard light, but it's not gonna be nearly as contrasty. So let's jump into Photoshop. I'm gonna show you how you can easily replace the background with any color while also retaining those original shadows that we shot in camera. All right guys, so here we are in the post-production studio and I wanted to show you how I created this final image, at least what I think will be the final image. And if I just come down here to this fill color, I can actually change this to any different type of color that I like. Something like that's kind of cool too. I went with this yellow color. I think this looks really neat. And I'm gonna show you how you can do this with a whole bunch of different product shots. It's super easy. So let me first open up the file that I wanna use here. I'm just gonna drag this file straight into Photoshop. And you can see my image straight out of camera is a little flat. So I'm gonna just show you the basic raw editing that I did. First, I'm going to take my exposure up just a touch. Let's go ahead and pull the whites out quite a bit. Let's play with our highlights and see what that does. I kinda of like the punchiness that the highlights give when you bring that over. And then shadows. Maybe bring the shadows up a little bit, and then the blacks, we could actually bring the blacks down just a touch to give it a good look. And I believe that's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna hit open image. And the first thing I wanna do is get this image nice and straight. So I'm gonna come up here to the crop tool, and I'm gonna rotate this around, and I'm gonna look at my grids here to make sure that everything is nice and straight here on the bottom and on the top. We'll hit okay. And if you're ever shooting a product like this, but you're not completely straight down perfectly, you might start to get a little keystoning. You could come up here to edit and then go to transform and actually start to pull the edges out a little bit. But uh, I shot directly over the pedal, so everything looks pretty straight. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I need to cut the product out of the background. I wanna separate the product itself from the white paper and the shadow, and that's going to allow me to control both the color on the background and the pedal separately. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate this layer, and now I just need to cut this out. Now, luckily, we have a lot of contrast in this image, so I'm gonna to try to use my trusty old magic wand selector here, and what I can do is just click anywhere on the white, and it's gonna select everything white. You can see it's also selected a bit of this pedal button up here, that doesn't look great, so I'm gonna lower my tolerance, maybe down to 11, and restart that. And you can see now it hasn't selected the, the little dynamic knob up here that is white. And then holding shift, I can get the little plus icon to show up here. And I'm just gonna go through and start selecting other areas that are white while continuing to hold shift down. And I wanna make sure that I get everything that is not the pedal itself. Sometimes you have to select quite a few times. Now, if you feel more comfortable with the pin tool or the, uh, what is this one called? The polygonal lasso tool, you can definitely use that. I like to just start here and if I ever select anything I don't like, I'm gonna just hit the undo button. Maybe this little finicky area I will manually mask in here in a bit. Just keep clicking around. Let's get the shadows down here. Now one disadvantage of using the magic wand tool is sometimes it selects things you don't want, like the switches being selected again, but other times it leaves little selections out in no man's land. So let's go over to the polygonal lasso tool. I'm gonna continue to hold shift and I could just kind of highlight these so that I get all those little parts. Sometimes I like to just select big areas just so that I know everything out there to the left is completely selected. I can see a few little areas it missed here. So we'll just do like this. You can always clean these up later. Now I need to really zoom in and clean this up quite a bit. So you can see this is a big mess here. So I'm gonna to continue to draw around holding shift Get this edge nice and clean, and that all looks pretty good, so I'm just gonna close up that selection. I need to get all of this up here. So the next thing I need to do is I need to unselect 
some of this area that the magic wand picked. So I'm now gonna hit Alt instead of Shift, and you can see Alt is going to add the little minus key. And so now I'm just going to make my selection right here on the knob. Now keep in mind, I am making a mask for all of the white. So I'm making a mask for everything that's not the petal. So in many cases with the selection, I like to select just a little bit inside my margins because when I make that mask, it's going to hide that little bit of the product on the top, but I feel like it's better to hide some of the dark colors and some of the object on top because if I don't come in far enough, I'm gonna see the white bleed through on the bottom. I'm sure that's gonna happen when I make the selection and I'll show you how I like to combat that. But I always like to pick just a little bit inside that makes sense. This doesn't have to be perfect. If you want to get this perfect, you can definitely spend a lot more time than I'm doing, but something like that looks pretty good. I need to clean this little area up here. Now there's a thousand different ways to skin a cat. You could use luminosity masks. You could use, you know, the lasso tool. You could come down here and use the pin tool, wherever that is right here. I'm just trying to do this pretty quickly to show you guys how this technique works. Now here's an interesting area where part of the back of the pedal overhangs the top part of the pedal. I don't like the way this looks, so I'm actually just going to select the inside here, just like I was talking about. And when this is all said and done, you're never even gonna see that part of the metal casing behind it. Let's see if this happens throughout. Yeah, see it happens here as well. So I'm gonna come in here and just highlight this whole area. Now, my magic wand didn't get a lot of the sh uh, shadows here, so I'm going to just take this polygonal tool, and since this should be a pretty sharp edge, I'm just going to come across it pretty abruptly. That should make a nice edge. I'm gonna continue to cut out this area here. And I'm just gonna loop back around and bring it back here to where I started. Clean up some of this. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this side. So I can see if I really zoom in here, my selection is just outside the pedal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lasso a little bit more inside the pedal. Again, making sure my margins are always on the inside. And then you should get to a point here where again, the pedal is so straight that you can really zoom out quite a bit and just take this selection all the way up to the top. Let's loop back down and reconnect this. And finally, I'm gonna come over here to the left side of the pedal and straighten all of this up as well. I want everything to be nice and straight, nice and clean, and I don't want any of the white backdrop to bleed through on my final image. So you can see I'm actually backtracking quite a bit. I'm almost going around the entire pedal. Maybe I should have started doing this from the beginning. I don't know that the magic wand tool really saved me a whole lot of time, but I wanted to show you just a few techniques if you've never had to make a selection. There are a lot of tutorials online on how to make selections, but the selection is a huge part of this process. If you do not make a good selection, the final product is not gonna look very good. And then finally, I need to deal with this power cable up here. This is probably the toughest part, just because it's so detailed. And then I'm gonna switch to Alt, make sure I get this little label here. And again, everything doesn't have to be perfect, but you do wanna err on the side of cutting into the product more than you wanna err on the side of leaving a little bit of that gap between the background and the product. All right, that selection looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is, because that took so long to make the selection, I'm actually gonna save it so that if I ever need this original tight selection, I have it. I'm gonna come down here to select and then save selection. I'm going to title this, Pedal Selection 1, 
and that's going to be the most simple base selection ever. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I actually want to shrink this selection by a few pixels so that those margins that I made are tightened up just a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to select, modify, and in this case, since I'm selecting the outside, I actually want to expand my selection. I know it feels like I'm shrinking it, but I'm actually expanding the white coming in. So I wanna to come to modify, expand. Maybe I should do maybe three pixels. This is gonna depend on how many megapixels you've shot the image with. I think three is a pretty good place to start. And then I'm gonna come up here and select modify, feather. You can also hit shift F6 to do this. And I'm going to feather that pixel selection by one. So that's just going to make it have a little transition without it being a super sharp transition. Let's do that. And now I'm just going to simply hit delete. So what I've done is I've deleted all of those pixels that are selected, which is all of the white part of the petal. And if I turn off my base layer here, you can see I get the checkerboard. I'm going to deselect everything. And Hopefully, everything is selected really well. You can see that this looks really nice and clean. It has that one pixel of feather, but then it also is tightened up just a little bit by expanding that selection. Now, here's the big moment of truth. I need to put a different color underneath the petal to see how well my selection actually went. So I'm gonna come down here to my adjustment layers, this little circle with a half moon on it, and I'm gonna come up to solid color. And now I get to choose any color that I want. Sometimes I like to just go with red. And it made the selection just above my top layer, so I'm gonna bring this down to the middle. I'm just gonna click it, bring it to where it slides in between. And now I have a solid red color behind my petal. And what I wanna do is just kinda of zoom in pretty closely and see if there's any areas where the white from the background is bleeding through. I do not see any areas that really bleed through. You can see because I expanded my uh, selection, you have this little edge here where it jumps up. You could go in and really refine that. I don't think that that bothers me too much. You would really only notice that if you're looking at it at 300%. I don't think that's the end of the world. You do see that because I was shooting on white, you start to get a little bit of fill light here on the edge so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my top layer and I'm gonna go to my burn tool. I'm gonna select maybe mid-tones, come down to maybe like 11%. And I'm just gonna burn in some of those tones right on the top layer. Now this is destructive the way that I'm doing it. I'm just trying to make this tutorial go a little faster. You could make a burn and dodge layer above here that you attach to this. And then if you find that you ever need to go back and undo any of this, you will be able to do it quickly. But since I've already done this dozens of times on other products of the pedals, I know that this is going to work pretty well. I'm just gonna do that on both sides here. Just darken that highlight a little bit. I want some contour there, but I don't need it right here on the edge. I like this highlight down the middle, but I'm just gonna tighten up that contrast on the sides here. I can also go up to highlights and burn that down just a little bit too. Something like that looks pretty good. I may also have the same issue here. You can see this highlight right on the edge of the pedal. If I go to mid-tones, I could burn that in a little bit too. And just giving this little burned in edge is gonna give a little bit more contour to the overall pedal. I don't think that it's totally needed, but it is another step that you could add just to kinda tighten everything up. So here's where the real magic comes. This is probably why you're watching the tutorial. I have made this adjustment layer that fits in the middle, but if I turn my bottom layer on, you can see it does nothing. If I turn off the red, you can see all of my shadows reappear. So in my history here, I've picked a few different blending changes. I just wanna show you the difference here. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit larger so that you can see. The first one I have here is multiply. The second one I have here is linear burn. And then the final one is pin light. And you can see they have a different effect on the overall shadows and tones of this. For this particular one, I don't, I don't think it really matters what you pick. I'm gonna stay with pin light. I feel like that looks pretty natural. As I change this color, if I just double click on this and change it to a different color besides the red, 
you might see some strange things. Like you can see my uh, shadow now doesn't have the dark blue. So maybe I wanna change this to hard light is actually the one I think I've been using the most. And that allows my shadows to have still some density, but also be filled in with that color. Now, the obvious problem that you're gonna see once I change this to hard light is some of these areas that I selected are masking through. Like I did not want the edge of the pedal there. Let me see if, uh, if I have any other areas of problems. Now the easiest way to fix this, I'm gonna come up here to my clone stamp tool. I'm gonna to select a really tiny brush and then using Alt to select an area, I'm just gonna come up here and repaint in some of this area. Maybe I need to come here and pull this in just a touch. And what I like to do is I like to just take the brush and basically touch the edge, sample the edge, and then bring my brush in just a few pixels. And I'm now just going to paint all the way up just so that I can delete any of those pixels. Here we go, pull that in a little bit. Especially up here with the jacks, I'm just gonna pull from nearby. And basically all I'm doing is I'm shrinking the layer below and I'm just pulling it in just slightly. Can be really careful with these shadows. You probably don't even need to do it up here. Like here's a good example where my shadow is ending right here underneath if I just select this and then pull up. Some of this ghosting, I can just pull in right here, get rid of that. I also have a hair here that I can fix. Don't know how that got there. And you can see how much sharper it's making all of these little problem areas that are ghosting just a bit. I also know because I'm lighting so far away with hard light that I know the tone values right anywhere here are going to be about the same, but they're obviously they change quite a bit in the shadows. So many times I can pick in a color very far away or seemingly far away and I can paint that in and it's going to show up pretty accurately and not look too far off. Here's a good example where I could pick a color here, just brush that in on the bottom there. And then as I do this, I clean up any little blemishes that I see on the white paper. You got to remember the white paper is what's laying below all of this. In this area in the shadows, this is where it's really nice to pick very close to the edge of the petal because sometimes these tones do change really quickly as the shadows become darker to lighter. And sometimes when you're zoomed in this much, it feels like the transitions are nice and smooth, but then as I zoom out, I might find that I've gone too far. And then I gotta get my dodge tool and start dodging and burning get my shadows back, so I definitely don't want that. So I think that is pretty good. Now, if I turn off the top layer and show you the bottom layer, all of that cloning that I've done has made the petal look really ugly. You can see this layer looks almost unusable, but when I put the top layer back on, it makes that seamless. And then now, putting in the color layer, I can now pretty much have a final product. I think for my image, my final image, I went with kind of a yellow color. Something like that is pretty cool. And then of course, if you want, you can come to the top layer and you can start, you know, removing, maybe I'll choose the spot healing brush. And I could start coming in here and just really quickly cleaning up any of these blemishes that are on the petals. And what I'm doing is I'm deciding if this petal looks pretty new, I'm gonna to try to make it look flawless. But if I come across a petal that I'm photographing that's super beat up and it looks vintage, I definitely wanna keep all of that character in there. So that is just a few little techniques that you can use. One other thing I'll show you that I did in the last video where I shot a guitar is I like to add some gradients. So let's say I wanna make this a little moodier. I like a lot of product shots that use the same blue. So I can actually come down here and choose the blue of the petal itself. And then maybe I wanna 
go this direction with it. I can come back down here to my adjustment layers and let's hit a levels and make sure that the levels is above my blue. I can also hit alt and then click between the two layers and you're gonna get this little arrow. And that's gonna tie my levels only to the color layer. It's not gonna affect the layer below it. And let's open this dialog box up a little bit. Let's pull down my mid-tones a little bit so I get a darker blue. And then let's come over here to my gradient tool. If I set this to black and white, I can now do some pretty interesting things. I can make just a slight little gradient here. If I right click and hit duplicate layer, it's gonna make another one. If I zoom out, you can see what I'm doing here. It just gives this little subtle or not so subtle change in the background. I can pull my opacity down a little bit and you can see if I toggle these on and off, it adds a really nice effect. Let's say I wanna do something more extreme. I can come here and make a really short transition. I can tweak this level. I can actually pull the whites down a bit. Maybe I'll do that on this one too. And you can see because I have these levels tied to my color layer below the top petal layer, it's not affecting the top of the petal, which is really cool. I can do the same effect on the petal. I can come down here to my adjustment layer, hit levels, bring this up to the very top. Let me hit alt and attach it to the top layer. And now, I can essentially do the same thing, only affecting the top part of the pedal. Maybe I want just the slightest little gradient. If I turn this on and off, see what it does there. Let's duplicate this one. And you get some pretty interesting effects where just by adding these gradients, it almost feels like the pedal is more three-dimensional. I think the background is done just a little too much. That's a little over the top. Let me pull these layers down just a bit. Something like that's pretty cool. And what's so cool is you can always change the color with the gradient still in place. So I can just double click on my layer, my color layer, and I can just toggle through different options here. I think this top one on the pedal is a little much, so I could bring the opacity down here. This just gives you a lot of flexibility without having to do anything destructive. And one final thing, I can see there's some strange pixels here on the bottom right where I was shooting past the paper. If I go to my brush tool, I select my background layer, hit Alt, select really near to it, and then just paint. Make sure all of my edges extend to the far part of the canvas, and boom, I am done. Pretty cool, so again, all we're doing is adding a fill layer, adjustment layer, putting it in between our white paper with all the shadows and our final product shot, and now I can change the background to any color that I want. You can do this with all kinds of photo shoots. If you shoot on seamless paper and you do portraits, this is a really good technique as well. So let me show you this image real quick because this was a different approach that I took. This was the exact same technique. I lit everything pretty much the same way, cut it all out, put it on a gray background. I can toggle that on and off right here. So this was the petal shot on white paper and then I added a gray tone, which I thought was kind of cool. If I come down here, I can kind of go this route, which is really, really cool too. I dig this a lot. But what I started to do was I said, what if I added some different layers that gave the background some texture? I found this paper background that I liked a lot. I also found this really subtle brushed metal look. And then I found another brushed metal that was a little more intense. And I loved the shadows that this uh, image had as a background plate. And so I thought, what if I start manipulating this even more and really adding some mood to it? So I got there, but I felt like the pedal itself doesn't have enough gradients. It feels like I copied it and pasted it on top of something. So let me start turning on some of these gradients. You can see it just darkens the bottom side of the pedal. I put a hue saturation. I felt like this pedal was going a little purple. And so I brought that down to make it look a little more gray. Here's a levels that kind of makes the top a little darker. And then finally a level here that brought this down. Maybe that could come in a little more subtly, something like that. 
And you can see the sky is really the limit. I don't know if this is the final route that I'm gonna go. I do really love that teal color, but knock yourself out. You can do a lot with this. Really cool technique. And at the end of the day, it's gonna allow me to create a ton of different looks. If, uh, if I was shooting for an actual manufacturer, I could easily change the color of these pedals very easily. And if they wanted it on pure white for e-commerce, I have the option to do that with the click of a button. Or if they want to have it to where it's got pastel colors, really, I can deliver them anything. I could actually give them this Photoshop file and teach them how to change that color, and they could set the mood to all of their images, no matter what their campaign is down the road. So, hope you guys found this useful. This is a really cool project. I'm really excited to dive into this more. I've shot maybe 10 petals so far. You can see a bunch of them right here. And this is really exciting. It's something easy I can do in my house, be productive, and this is a project that I never probably would have started if I was able to go out and do the normal things that I shoot pre-quarantine. So if you guys want more content like this, head over to fstoppers.com, check out our free daily content. If you want more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Also hit that notification so you'll get an email every time we release a video. And if you want to learn photography techniques from some of the world's best photographers, head over to fstoppers.com slash store where we have our full length tutorials. And if you enjoy shooting product shots and you like some of these techniques that I've shared with you, check out the tutorial we did with Brian Rogers Jr. called The Hero Shot. Many of these techniques that I've shared with you in this tutorial, I actually learned from Brian and he's an incredible photographer. So if this is your sort of thing, definitely check that out. Hope you guys are being good and staying safe out there. Stay encouraged and hopefully you can find your own passion project and apply some of these same techniques to your own work. See you guys soon.